Hi there. To end the rumors and speculation, I have taken over as coach and general manager of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I understand it is a long-standing tradition in Pittsburgh for the head coach to be tenured for quite some time. And Tomlin, he was a good man, but he broke. He couldn't stand the thought of losing his consecutive winning streak of seasons. So he's decided to hit the road. He's officially become a professional bull rider. So ownership has turned to me, Lou Fink, to take over. Leuven is what my friends call me. And you might be asking, hey, Lou, where do you come from? Well, I come from a previous experience uh, many times over. Mike Tomlin was a good guy. I come from more of a hardcore background. I come from thick off back to back football championships. So ownership saw my potential as coach and GM and put me in charge of turning around this franchise. A franchise that is storied as great as they've ever been. We are basically the hamlet of football teams. So my job today and going forward for you, if you'd let me, Yinzers, is to take this team to the next level. Not one Super Bowl, not two, but let's break the record. Let's go for three back-to-back. -back. It might be a few years till we get there, but it's going to be a fun, long, bumpy, enjoyable, and hopefully soul-stealing few years. Yes, Mortal Kombat style. I will suck the souls out of Cleveland, Cincinnati, Baltimore, and whoever stands in our way. AFC North dominance will be ours soon. And you have my word on that, if my name isn't Lou Fink. The Steelers are making a head coaching change. Mike Tomlin is out of Pittsburgh after a long tenure as their head coach. And we bring in the brand new coach, Leuven Fink. Previously a SEAL clubber. I, I, I don't know what a SEAL clubber is. But anyway, also a former cock fighter. But most importantly, because that has nothing to do with football, most recently led a team back-to-back -back powder puff football championships, which is super, super important. How do you feel about it? Do you think it's an overreaction? Do you think it's uh, you know a good fit for, uh, for the Steel City and for the Steelers? This is the worst thing that the Steelers could ever do. I mean, you're going to get rid of, of your head coach, who has been your head coach for I don't know however many years. I mean, he hasn't had a losing season, I don't... I, Almost forever, man. I mean, you're going to get rid of him for a guy named Lu Leuven Fink. I mean, like, okay, his last name's Fink. We I think already... it's Lovin. I think it's Lovin. I well, think it's well you know what? Fink. I don't guess what? I don't love him, so I'm not going to say his name's Lovin Fink. I don't care what his name is. His last name is Fink. His parents obviously don't love him if their last name is Fink, okay? All right, whoa, look, whoa. next next up, his, his Seal Clubber. I don't even know what a Seal Clubber is. Why, like, what, what does that even have to do with his resume? I mean, that just shows the hey, Steelers front office. Like no, you never, no, never, I don't hate, I, I can't stand seals. I hate them. They're always looking at you, that dumb smirk on their face. So I don't even know what a seal clubber means. Does that mean he clubs seals? Congratulations, right? And he's a cockfighter. Great, great. He, he, fight, he fights cock. He has chickens fight each other. Congratulations. And back-to-back -back powder puff football championships. Who cares? All right, look, my look, my four-year-old could lead a team of powder puff players to a championship. I don't. I, this is the worst move the Steelers hey, could ever make. Hey, Rudy. Okay, all I'm saying is, did you see any of the tape for the powder puff games? They ran the wing T. The wing T. Do you know how hard it is to implement the wing T to teenagers, let alone powder puff football? Come on, the wing T. I think I think it's going to translate well into the no. NFL. Look, you're you're wild. You're you're crazy. Okay, what the, the Steelers have no chance of winning with this new coach. All right, I give him I give him a year max, maybe two at best, and he will be out of the NFL and he'll be back to cockfighting. I don't really know, man. You never been to Sea World? Come on, the Seals. I you know I, I feel like it's an overreaction for you. You know I I feel like he has a he's a proven track record. Hey, did he did he coach high school football? No. Did he did he coach guys in football? No. Did he did he coach at the college level? No. Maybe he has a different you know 
background in, in other sports, maybe like water polo or rugby. But water I, polo? What it, what, look, look, and listen to yourself speak right now. We're talking about a man water poling, a seal clubber, who is now going to try to lead an NFL team, right? We've seen what happens. This guy's going to be worse than Chip Kelly was as a coach, man. This guy won't last a year being the head coach of the Steelers. The Steelers fan base is going to eat him alive. Hey, the Yinzers. The Yinzers in Pittsburgh, I think, will love Leuven. Loving, you know, how about this? Steel City and the Yinzers are loving Leuven, okay? That's what the slogan is going to be for the remainder of the year. Let's love in Leuven. Well, we'll just have to find out. Back to you next week. All right, so we are in week nine. Currently two and six in the division. Tough. We're, we're looking up. We're looking up, which is an, an awful place to be. Okay, so really, really, really not having a good time so far. But it's okay. I mean, a rookie quarterback, Trubisky, has been playing for us. It is what it is. Let's take a look and what, what kind of we're working with, right? Let's take a look at the roster, first of all, and see what's all uh, working for us. So we have Trubisky, who is going to get um, downgraded to Trubo obviously is behind Kenny Pickett so we got to go ahead and move him up there we go Kenny Pickett up to starter Najee Harris Deontay Pickens Claypool it is the trade deadline today so we really need to do quite a bit of transactions right TJ Watts over here 95 Cameron Hayward 93 Alu Alu Adams Davis not a, a ton of young studs but we do have a decent amount of talent it just has been put together my first job is going to be to fire the offensive coordinator right because when you look at you got players like Najee Harris he's he's really like been kind of given the short end of the stick he has not been developed like he should have power back let's go ahead and, and throw a skill point into power back here see if we can get some trucking and stuff Awareness, carrying, stiff arm, and strength, okay? Because because really at 88 speed, 89 break tackle, trucking is a pretty well-rounded back. But the problem is he's been dancing a lot in the backfield. He hasn't had a whole lot of running lanes. He hasn't really had an ability to get the ball in space. I just feel like our playmakers aren't getting the ball enough, okay? So the ability for Kenny Pickett, and hopefully Kenny Pickett, the future of a franchise, we can improve him. Otherwise, we might be looking at a top pick next year and we might need to uh, take his replacement if he's not able to give us what we need because right now 86 throw power is not great I, he's known as a great decision maker but a 71 awareness shows that he ain't, the, he ain't the best personality trait he's a leader um average sense of pressure average he's got a tight spiral on something that his predecessor Roethlisberger never had uh predictable and balanced so um overall he's been pretty solid I'd say uh, but he will be getting the, the he has been getting the starting nods. Although I don't know how the depth chart looked on the uh, the games prior to this. Fryermuth is is got like we got a young offense, and the issue is like a lot of players don't want on it. Claypool we know has had some trouble. Pickens is the next superstar. Sadly, it doesn't really show that he is a superstar development, even though he should be. We need to take take a look at that slot, kind of like on the deep threat as that more than the, the slot almost because he is supposed to have those high spec catch medium route running spec catch plus one on him is really nice so overall 85 spec catch that i mean with his with his ability to make one-handed catches he's he's been absolutely putting up highlight tapes everywhere okay our offensive line is pathetic that's something we definitely need to focus on going forward looks like we've got some uh injuries here to oka four fryer muth here is down a little bit so let's go ahead and increase I think I want him more of a, a, a safety blanket. So we're going to go with possession uh, more than blocking. We're, we're going to be, we're going to transform and, and keep being kind of a short kind of uh, throw type of offense, not necessarily be like the Steelers of old. So Fryermuth right there is, is going to kind of be that safety blanket over the middle. Maybe some catch some flat passes. Daniels Coles, like none of these guys really have a, a, a solid future. I mean, Daniels, I will say has got a pretty good guard right here for us. I do want to improve the pass block finesse, pass block power. I think I'm going to go pass protector because we are going to kind of throw the ball. We want to get Kenny Pickett quite a bit of protection there. So having having James Daniels there 
70 pa pass block finesse is 83 pass block power is 80 that's actually pretty good i don't mind the right guard the right guard's not a spot i want to look at uh, changing so i'm going to come in and we're going to we're going to change them things some things here cuz it's been a pathetic year um i am going to make Deontay. i think i want to throw him into deep route running release and spec catch i kind of want to get him a little bit more over the middle i'm going to go slot i'm going to get him short route running to really get open underneath because I just want to get the balls in their hands. That's all I want to do. I want playmakers to make plays for me. 91 speed, acceleration, catching. Yeah, we're playing down quite a bit because of our uh, our, our losing streak. Uh, I mean, we, we beat the Bucks a few weeks back, but overall we've been uh, pretty terrible. Yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a rough season, and it is what it is. All we can do is is hope to rebuild. So we need to look to trade. I don't think uh, T.J. Watt is basically untradeable. I don't think I wanna I don't think I wanna get rid of him. Um, speed rusher yeah let's get finesse move on on tj watt get him up one i did get finesse nice plus four to zone coverage zone coverage 68 motivation abilities of the big one double force a good one edge threat and no outsiders i think edge threat is good enough edge threat and double or nothing if i go edge threat and double or nothing he's the greatest pass rusher in history but if i go edge threat and outside no outsiders means he's gonna stop run side that side so i i don't know do we double up i think against different can i put no outsiders back on this i know sometimes if you equip something you can't put it back on so i'm a little concerned about losing no outsiders yeah i don't know if i can uh but i will say double or nothing makes them absolutely incredible i think i want to keep the double i think i want to keep the edge thread no outsiders versus going double or nothing and getting like crazy pressure so I, i'm not gonna I, I think i'm gonna keep them a little bit more balanced overall um and just being like a just an absolute freak off the edge because that's like basically tj watt coming back after the buy here is going to be our entire defense. Alex Highsmith, he's done pretty well. He's gotten, what, a few sacks this year. Done all right there. Uh, but overall, we might need to replace him going forward. Um, I don't know how much. He did not get any finesse move upgrades right there. So finesse move is only 78. That's not going to beat a whole lot of offensive tackles in the league. Um, it's not going to really do a, a great job for us. We have defense here. Uh, Devin Bush has got speed. Miles Jacks actually played pretty decently this year for us uh devin bush with his ratings he's 90 speed that should be like i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna teach him how to play middle linebacker like uh, that is absurd the fact that he's not making more plays for us with that kind of skill so let's go ahead and throw a field general onto him um to get his smarts up a little bit he's not a great against the run but i'm not gonna kind of double down on something he's already bad at so we're gonna he did get a plus speed that's even crazier speed in his zone coverage he's at the 91 speed he needs to be making more plays. Our defense needs to revolve around that man and that man alone in the middle. Miles Jack, so we'll have a, we got a pretty decent nickel type of situation here. Pass coverage. I think I might throw it out on pass coverage for him. I'll probably try and uh, main up and let let uh, let Bush run around and Miles Jack kind of play the consistent linebacker with 76 zone coverage. So he will be able to react decently well, not incredibly well, to passes thrown to his area but decently well with that 76. And our run defense is all going to be based around Cameron Hayward and Tyson Alualu. If they do their job, we can make a lot of things happen. So Cameron Hayward, he is really nice because he, he absolutely stuffs the middle of the field. Uh, inside stuff is crazy. Unpredictable is really nice. Uh, we could throw double or nothing on him to have a better defensive interior pass rush. I think that might be the move over unpredictable just for the middle of the field to go wild and then i think for an x factor we are going to we're gonna throw on a relentless instead of unstoppable force for him relentless to get our uh rush moves because double or nothing will take away a lot of our rush move points so we're gonna stack relentless on top of it he does not like us right now at the moment but he is a legend of the franchise we gotta this guy's number is gonna be retired by us i feel like by the end of it 33 years 11 years with us he's just getting better every year for the steelers so really, our defense is built from the front seven out, as you know, normal Pittsburgh Steelers defenses have been. Alu Alu right here. This should be a very solid run stopper. Block shed's only 79, which is actually surprising to me that he's only got 79 block shed. So not as good as I thought it was. I thought he'd be in the mid 80s at least. Okay. Um, our cornerbacks, Witherspoon and Wallace. If you guys watch them, they've been a little bit of uh, burnt toast so far this year. But let's let's stick, let's 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 pump them up to man to man, um, up to eighty overall that way. Press, 
I mean, a good man scheme and your opponent not being able to get anybody open is kind of important. So an 84 man coverage, you kind of want to see that over 90. 90 speed, you're going to get wrecked by guys like the Tyreeks of the world, the Waddles. You know, we matched up against the Dolphins a few weeks ago. Uh, we saw a little bit of their speed take advantage of us. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the second half, we actually did pretty good there. Let's keep with the man-to-man -man skill points going there. I might actually switch over to a zone here, but I think I want to find actual zone corners that can kind of do that for me. 91 speed on this guy. Bad man cover to 78. Going to get burned a little bit. Low in agility to really stick and, and slide. Um, and he can't really slide off blocks. Only 49 block shedding. So we've overall, we don't have a lot of pieces, but I've really liked the way our... Hang on, I was looking. I, I might go to the depth chart. I, I wanted to find where Warren was. Is Warren, I used the NFL rosters. He's the actual running back. Upgrade players. Claypool, I think, is on the block for me. I think this is a trade away. Uh, yeah, let's go with a physical receiver because that's just who Claypool is. I think Claypool, it's the trade deadline today. I think I'm going to see what I can get for tra uh, for Claypool. A, a star development. Uh, let's just go ahead and... Oh, Minka gets one more too. Let's get him up to 90 overall zone corner. See what his abilities are at, too. Spe he gets a speed and a zone. That's huge. I mean, he got 92 speed and now 87 zone. I want that zone up to 90. Uh, but what's his abilities? Pick artist, tip drill. Those things kind of double up what they do. I'm going to go deep out zone knockout for Minka. And I might put mid zone KO on him, too. What, is, what does this get? Mid zone knockout. I think I'm actually going to go pick artist and... He's going to be playing deep a lot for me. So deep out zone knockout will be his ability here instead of tip drill. So I'm very good with Lumberjack is good for a big hitter. Yeah, if I had a man, if I, if I used him in man, I think I'd probably go like a route KO. Acrobats, very fun. Deep out, kind of want mid zone. But I want a guy that's going to win one-on-one -on -one ball. So pick artist is going to do that for me. So we're going to do those two right there. Uh, let's go ahead and upgrade all the players. Just get them all up to the... Their overall numbers. So we're on by this week. Um, our staff. All right, franchise staff. The first thing I needed to do in my first job was to go to the offensive coordinator and fire him. He's gone. It terrible, terrible job this year. Let's go hire a new guy. Uh, we took him out back. We sent Matt Canada. He's still under contract with the team, so we sent him to Chile to find the best chili recipe, and that's his job the rest of the year and for the rest of his time with us. All right, we want a good... Let's take a look. Offensive playbook. Las Vegas, Detroit, Carolina. I kind of want this wait, offensive... Yeah. Victor Price is the guy we just let go. Let's go ahead and throw Clark Mathis. Hire Clark. New England offensive playbook. We're bringing him in. All right, we do, do have a talent tree, though. We got some upgrades we got to make to our staff. I think really I want my player personnel. We want to develop this stuff. Draft day. So we're going to build through the draft. That's our goal going forward. Like Steelers have always built through the draft. 2% trade discount. Let's go there. Can I go down immediately or not? Guaranteed trade package. Non-X-Factor user players. We value one depth trade higher than the actual in trade. Yeah, that'd be good. Reduce the cost of trading up during the draft. So do one of each before we go into the next one. Yes. And then we'll go non-X-Factor players. We got third. We got to get uh, 50 Detroit for all of it. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to put 2% 2 more discount for CPU draft picks. I'm going to be trading for draft picks like crazy here. Let's go ahead right there. And that's what we want. That's what we want. Because we're going to be trading for a bunch of draft picks right here. So, let's go ahead and do that. I think with our rebuilding year, it's not a great idea. But there's no way to build a team as... Uh, I, I can't build a team with an awful offensive line. Without the trenches being solid. Now, our defense has carried us for so long. But I don't think Claypool's got the it factor for us. I don't think Najee's got the it factor for us. I kind of want to keep them both to let them let them go forward. But I think Pickens and Kelvin Austin need to be that two and three for me. 95 speed, 96 acceleration. IRL, he's out for the whole year. So I should probably do that myself. He is out for the whole year, isn't he? Is this is this is this something where we're gonna take him out for the whole year? Um, is there an option to do that? Franchise settings? There might not be. There might not be a way of uh, taking him down a notch. We got trade Chase Claypool in our franchise now for the Bears' second round pick. All right, Bears. We just lost Chase Claypool. Let's see if the game will give it to me. All right, advance, submit. Yes. What? This game's not sim. This is trash. Trash. Now we can finally get it done. 
advance, submit. All right. We finally got the Bears second round pick on our team. All right. What are the trades we want to make for the Steelers franchise right now? I think I want to sell off, dog. What will Miles Jack get me? Advance. Let's see what they get. Let's see what they, see what they, see how much they like this one. We got a second round pick for Miles Jack? Whoa. That was kind of wild, wasn't it? I didn't expect that at all, dude. I feel like I fleeced them. I'm not trading away in Legends of the Franchise. I think I'll keep these three. Dude, Najee kind of sucks. Should have asked for a first. I guess so, dude. Panthers fleeced me. For an 83 middle linebacker, that's slow. Does anybody want Alu Alu? All right, what do the Saints have? He had Superstar Dev. Oh, that's why I got fucking uh, fleeced, huh? All right. Do they have a set? What about a second rounder for Alu Alu? So we can get this one now. Nice. All right, Alu Alu. He's actually got relatively low block shed. That's why I, that's why I want to get rid of him. The Seahawks want Witherspoon? What about pick 22? Can I, can I bundle some stuff for it? Let's add Daniels. They do love Daniels. I got two greens to give them. Give me your first first round pick. Actually, I don't know. Wait, who? The Seahawks have round one pick eight of. Is that the Jets or who? I guess nothing else. It's like I'm wearing nothing at all. Oh my God, barely. All right, you get my seventh round pick then. Boom. All right, cool. Another first round pick. First round pick for Witherspoon and my right guard. My right guard was like the only guard that was any good though. So we are really, we are really tearing down the squad. This is not going to be great development for Kick, uh, Kenny Pickett though. I was like, if we look at our current lineup at the moment, we lost, we went down six overall right guard, which I don't care. Defense here. I mean, we went from like an 80. I mean, our nickel's not going to be great, but it's not like he was an athletic freak. And then uh, we lost our D tackle, but... Oh, Leal, is he injured? Hold to reorder. If I decide to let go of Cameron Hayward, right? Which IRL I've never want to do. But I wanna, if I let him go, dude, I can really get some wild first round picks. Scott Cobb. All right, let's see who's available in the draft. So I kind of want to look through a few of these prospects. There will be a top pick at quarterback here. Jeff McClain. I think he's related to the guy that saved that uh, Naka Hobby Tower or whatever. Back in the 80s. But he looks pretty freaking nice. The thing is, I don't think I'll have the number one overall pick to take him. Skills. Really good accuracy. Wow. Hayden Banks from Virginia. 6'6". Six, six. Physicals. Great to elite speed. And good block shedding. Finesse move is A to C. Hit power A. Power moves A to C also. Dang, he'd be a crazy edge. He might be our... our, 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 our like, if we could have picked that high... With our continued losing, we might be able to get him. We got a, there's a few quarterbacks in the top 10 this year. Henry Kirkland, one of his related to Le'Veon. Solid to good speed. Hit power. Power moves. Again, power and finesse are so odd. Uh, so we're going to we're gonna circle back later in the season to take a look at them. But I think, obviously, offensive line, a tackle will be a really good need. We're going to have a lot of picks here, though, at the top. But yeah, overall, I feel like we got the building blocks for the future here. And I'm, I'm definitely okay with that. Hey, also, while we're setting up sliders, so we're going to be on all Madden difficulty, and I just looked up uh, C4's video, I just googled best all Madden sliders, Madden 23, and I saw C4 video, so I just basically uh, put what he had on his video, um, it kind of makes it a little bit easier, it looks like, on the user, so I don't know, we'll see if the game's too easy, being a god tier gamer and all. Um, but here is, here is what it's it suggested for sliders. So we'll see how that plays out for us. Um, overall, I want to try one more trade and I, I, I couldn't figure out, I think I want to see if I can't ditch Najee. He's been a little bit of a, you know, kind of messing around. If I can get some, like, like if I can get like a first round draft pick for him, I will absolutely take it. Um, we're kind of like got to look for like a contender to... See if we can't get one like that needs that has a desperate need. I, I first want to check out the Eagles. Now they have an 84 overall running back, but um, I think they got two first round picks. I, I probably won't be able to get two first rounders for them, um, but let's let's see. Ah, yeah, screw it like that, and then we'll see what we can get. Um, let's see how much they're interested in Najee first of all, uh, because I feel like you know he's okay, but. With his injury lately, I, I feel like we can do a better job not investing that position as much. Maybe taking other positions. They were not um, interested in that at all. What about two first rounders? Not much at all either. Okay, what about just one first rounder and a third rounder? Because they are they are kind of interested in Najee. Um, don't enough of not enough value there. Okay, okay. What about one first rounder for Najee? Like, I don't know. I think Najee, to me, going forward, is probably worth more than one first rounder. I kind of want a couple picks for him. Let's take a look at another franchise 
that uh, might need a running back. I don't know if the Falcons would be interested in 49ers. They traded for CMC, but I don't think that's reflected in this in this game. So they might just instead, and yep, they've already traded for the first round. I, I wonder if, no, CMC's not gone yet. Um, they traded a, a few later round picks for him, now that I recall correctly, um, since that was the Trey Lance trade. Giants, they got a tight end. They got a running back that's incredible. Jaguars, they got the ETN. I, I doubt they're going to do that. Jets got a rookie there. Lions, they got Swift, who's kind of hurt. Packers, they got two good running backs. Uh, Panthers don't need one. I think they still have CMC in this simulation. Uh, Patriots. The Patriots. Let's take a look at what uh, we can get from the Patriots here. At, 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 they got Harris, who's an 83. Um, I wonder if they want Najee. Because I'd like to get faster that position, too. Um, they don't give enough value. They're first and second round pick. So they're also not really valuing a running back very high. You know, I just might want to work. I just might want to get my, you know, new position coaches working with Najee to really hit the hole better going forward. Um, you know, I got to trade him now or I can wait to the offseason. So I think what we're going to do is wait to the offseason um, to see if Najee's got any suitors. So, you know, I kind of want a little bit of speed behind him, though. Um, in this, in this uh, uh, simulation... For some reason, we don't have Warren. Um, I don't know why. I, I try to use real uh, NFL rosters. I don't know if the, the CPU cut them. So I'm going to go ahead and sign Mostert here, who has 80, uh, 95 speed. Sorry. 95 speed for Mostert. And we're going to go ahead and sign him to the active roster. We do have uh, a, a bit of cap room here. We only got him for one year. Um, so that's that, that'll be really nice. Mostert is signed. So that's going to be a, a solid change of pace. If I need like a third down back there, that's not Najee to kind of like go back and forth to the, the first down marker that, like that the one viral video went. And then we get Godwin and, and Deshaun Jackson here to get a little bit more speed, maybe stretch the field potentially for us. Um, acceleration, agility. Kind of want to see, what are their catching attributes? Change of direction, 86. Spin, juke, ooh. Deshaun would be a really nice kick returner, wouldn't he? Um, and that, like, okay, catch and traffic, catch. So they're pretty similar catching-wise. Godwin, hmm, because I'm not very, I'm not very, I'm not a big, very big fan of Oshetsky. I know, I know a lot of people like Gunner quite a bit, uh, but my kick return duties, I kind of want a little bit. Did I just say duty? But anyways, um, yeah, let's sign a little bit more speed with us. Uh, Fabian Morneau, we just traded for a cor cornerback. I'll show you that in a second. Um, we, had, we got it from Washington IRL, so I added him to the roster, but I think I want Godwin here. Um, just to have a little bit more of a gadget player. So we're going to sign him to the active roster for just the rest of this season. OBJ was, was already acquired, but I, I don't know who got him. I'm, I'm a little, little sad for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new players on the roster, the new depth chart, adjust the lineup, and we'll see what we have. Trubo, for some reason, keeps going ahead of him every time it gets reordered. Najee, Mostert, Snell right there at, at number three. We then have Pickens at two, Godwin at four, okay? I would like to run with Austin, but he's injured IRL, so I'm not really going to be using him. I do think Godwin is now our kick returner with Mostert as the, the backup kick returner, so that's pretty nice. I, I don't mind that uh, whatsoever. Specialist third down back is still Najee. I don't mind the extra speed on Mostert. I just got to make sure to remember to work him in a little bit. Sub linebackers, Carl Joseph and, and Bush right there. Hayward is an edge right here the rush left end and any sort of like nickel i might actually move him inside but if he's gonna be a, a rush left end for us i i don't know if i like that as much i kind of want him in the three tech um he has played the edge occasionally but the thing is yeah i think i want my best rushers out there which means high smith back to rush left end um so we're gonna go ahead and put him put him in for hayward then put at hayward at dt1 right there that is the lineup right now. Let's see. Let's take it into the game and see if Kenny Pickett's got that it factor for us. Um, I'm really going to want to focus on his throw motion in this game. See if it's uh, amenable because I'm going to, I got to have somebody work with Najee. You got to have somebody work with Pickett to try and speed up that throw motion as we head here uh, the rest of the season. So that's really what we're looking for. I mean, we got talent, but we got a lot of, a lot of holes in the roster. We really want to see George Pickens develop for us to a big, tall wide receiver. Um, and then I think in the slot, I'm actually going to use Godwin there instead of Miller. Oh, they put Deontay in the slot. He, I, I just want to confirm he doesn't get any 
any sort of abilities, does he? Look at that, he does. Short in Elite and, wow, this is huge. Think I'm going to put Slot Apprentice on him since he's gonna be my slot. That makes the most sense to me. Ooh, a slot of mat. I think short in is better because he'll be in the slot than slot o matic As crazy as it is. Because short in also gets bonus to cuts and it gets a bonus to... It's, it's something that they don't say. Um, it says catching, but you also get a, a route running bonus on short in elite. It's a hidden, it's a hidden bonus of that uh, ability for short in elite. So Deontay actually gets an ability. What are Najee's abilities then? Yeah, that would have been a mistake to trade this guy away. Tank? He's got tank unlocked. I might go bulldozer and tank. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, I might go armbar though. Armbar is really nice. Yeah, let's do bulldozer, bulldozer and tank. So they can't hit stick me. We'll see how they end up trying to tackle me. Um, otherwise, I can, if they never hit stick me, I would go to armbar, tank and bulldozer. That's gonna be huge for Najee. Okay, pick it. Let's show us what you got. Our game this week is against offensive game plan. Or oh, choose defensive game plan focus. You know, now that I now that I have Cameron Hayward in the inside run, I'm, I, I, yeah, I got I got to defend against Kamara. I think I'm going to keep defend inside run there, and then right here, offensive game plan focus. Yeah, I think I think having a nice interior run game will really help us. Help take pressure off Pickett. I kind of like the throw at medium though. Um, because Pickett needs all the help he can get. But I think if I can run the ball and get them into some sort of like heavy linebacker set or like really defending the run, I think I can, I, I think I can then, uh, take some play action shots. Um, uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Let's do, uh, should we play the moments? Play the moments, crucial third downs, two minute drills, red zone moments and more. I mean, this is the rebuilding year. I think I want to play a full game for the first one though. You guys let me know. Do you guys want to do moments going forward? Make it a little tougher. Let's ready up. All right, good luck to us advancing. Ooh, that was a badass shot of Lou Fink right there. Last week's stats, he rushed for 21-11. Oh, I'm glad I focused on trying to shut him down. Now, my biggest worry is him getting outside the tackle box because I'm going to try and shut down the interior. But if he can stretch us, he might have a little bit more speed than our defense has. I mean, we do have Devin Bush, but he does not read uh, offensive play plays whatsoever got such low awareness that he, he he wouldn't know what sport he's playing if we didn't tell him before the game Ooh, showing off the nice cleats pick it pick it leading the charge out the tunnel home game against these Nolan saints we're averaging only 3.4 yards allowed 20 sacks on the season i think that's fair i think the simulation i'm not sure tj watt got hurt rush yards per attempt is only 3.8 with 1,200 rush yards on the season? Was that, nine games? Isn't that a pretty dominant rushing attack? Or am I wrong? All right, so I'm advancing through cutscenes. All right, we are going to take uh, cover four quarters against tight offset tight end. We're going to shade underneath. And we'll be, uh, we're going to be on Joseph right here. I'm really worried about that interior run. What happened to Hayward? Hayward is out for the game. Hayward is actually out for the game. He's injured. He's not on the field, field of play for us. Practice this week was a rough one. 0-1 trap. Oh, no. You got to wonder if Cameron was there. Would he have made a difference? Stopping that eight-yard run potentially only for one or two. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Tight offset, tight end. Let's look what the coach has got to say. They want us in, they want us in man coverage here. All right. Watch out for the 0-1 trap once again. We're going to try and shoot this gap if they show that. Otherwise, inside. Oh, it's an 0-1 trap again. Oh, no. <laughs> They're ripping off five yards. <laughs> Oh gosh, oh gosh. All right, um, defensive coordinator is going to bl dial up a little blitz. Hot blitz three here. We're sending a little pressure off the edge. Let's creep a little closer, play a little press zone. And we're once again, once again, destroyed by the run game. Marching down the field of play. We got our nickel cornerback lineup on the other side of the formation from the running back. That's not going to be good. Dotted. Winston. Perfect. Two for two. 21 yards across the middle of the field. We're having a, a, having a tough time. He went right there to his rookie. Right off the bat. Secured the ball so far away from the defenders. More separation than an unhappy couple. TJ, we're going to need you to show up, man. 
Oh, wow. First drive of the new regime ends in a, a on the run wobbly balled touchdown against a cover two exploded on the sidelines. Now, you know, cover two is a very hot defense nowadays with the pass rush. And you saw TJ Watt was getting off the block, chasing him down, but the step up in the pocket, the on the run throw, no interior rush up the middle without Cam Hayward there. This team cannot function. We got his, we got the younger Hayward, but not the, uh, not the older brother. All right, Godwin, new free agent acquisition. Cannot really get the edge at all on the kickoff. So we're going to go ahead and look at the Saints defense right here. Secure tackler, flat zone KO on the Honey Badger, on the ball, and deep route knockout on Lattimore. So off the edge right away, Najee, stiff-armed forward a little bit, but is unable to get more than three reps for him. All right. Steelers right here coming to come out in a, a, a wide form. Looks like uh, we got six in the box here. A nickel as the defense responds. Najee at the middle. Ooh. Oh, breaking a tackle. Get to the outside. Najee is able to turn what looked like a tough run into a first down. I don't know why you go away from Najee. You know, two plays, one first down. Reminiscence of old Canada game plays. Run the ball every first down. Something that I know a lot of the fans hated back in the day. Not much room to run right there. Offensive line. Not really providing a whole lot. It looks like we are coming into a heavy set here. 3-4 defense matching. Play action. They're going deep. They go. Do they have it? Kenny Pickett ah, delivers to Pickens. The rookie pick ups, picks up a couple yards. Looks like the shot play was covered over the top, so the rookie smartly went to the intermediate route, which looked to come open at the last second available. We got looks like a single back deuce formation here now with Najee in the eye set. Not, no, not eye, but single back set. Not a great run right there. Najee did not choose the right hole. Living up to his Trent Richardson billing. But to be fair, there's not many holes right here with an offensive line that is just getting insta-shedded. Whoa, look at the juke. Look at the move by Najee. He absolutely showed those defensive tackles. What, what a skill position's true movement looks like. Steelers trying to shake things up with a five wide. They're looking at either a cover three or maybe some sort of cover two trap formation. But either way, it's looking like there might be some sort of fry Oh, not able to get the ball out as the pass rush came home. But that was a great call. Calling man coverage against the verticals. Pickett really only had one option, which was to throw the ball deep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The guard unable to lay his hands on the middle linebacker. And the middle linebacker slips through to make the tackle. All right, we got six minutes here left in the second quarter. I think the quarter length will actually in lengthen going forward. All right, got a bench concept right here. Fryermuth coming down with a nice grab there. Can he pick a two for three with 33 yards? Muth, they're inside the red zone now, the hardest place to score. Unless, of course, you have a dominant run game. Then it's not so bad. Let's see if uh, Najee himself can kind of find a hole, wiggle his way through. And boom, met in the hole by Mr. DeMario. And he really didn't go too far forward right there. All right, second and five. Steelers back in the single back. Pickett checking out the defense. Looks like Najee's kind of got an edge to run to. DeMario out there. Najee with the juke. Sadly juked into the ever-waiting arms of... The man that's absolutely causing a lot of panic in Pittsburgh right now. There was only one guy to beat out there. We couldn't lay a hand on him in the run game. And the, it, Sorry, as, as the blockers couldn't. All right. Pick it. Bunch right. Bunch right. Observing the defense. Deontay on the outside. Got trail routes. Out routes. Looks like Deontay... Oh, grabs it at the two-yard line. Perfect pitch and catch there. You know, your playmakers got to make plays for you. Get the ball in their hands, and they will do it. His ability short and elite did not help him right there. But what help did he need when he's got nothing but solid hands? All right. You got a power back on the goal line. This is it. 
mano a mano, man versus man, thickness versus thickness. Who wins the goal line push? Ah, roll into the end zone to tie the game. The power run game of Najee and the Steelers revamped but undervamped offensive line trading their star guard for a second round pick. Star was very used was used very lightly right there. Is that is that the gritty that we see on screen right now? Are we grittying a solid touchdown celebration? Maybe. Maybe a little. All right. 7-7 seven, seven in the second quarter. What a drive. Took up over five minutes a clock. That really lets the defense rest. And the defense is going to need a lot of rest today. Because not having Cameron Hayward pushing in the middle of the pocket is going to cause a lot of issues. Like we saw the touchdown from Jameis was because he's able to step up into that pocket that's usually being collapsed by one of the greatest defenders in the NFL today. But the fact that the Steelers have practice squad players essentially right there. Leal at defensive tackle. Looks like a screen pass. Oh! If they had hands, they'd be on offense. Well played. Probably the greatest play of Devin Bush's career. Just happened right there. Let's highlight Devin Bush for this play. We'll see what he does. We'll see how fast he is. It looks like a trips motion. Potentially a run right right there. And it is a play action indeed. To the flats. To Kamara. The playmaker for about five. So third and medium. 336 as it's count counting down. On their own 27. Going into half. A solid use of the check down function. Um, the Steelers coach is looking to cook up a little bit of a blitz. We'll see if Jameis can read it in time or not. Oh! It gets home before the route was able to develop in the middle of the field. Great call right there. Great call by defensive coordinator. More sacks. Reverse side. Reverse side of the field. Oh, we got too we're getting too fancy. We're trying to make too many things happen in the first first game of their Steeler career. Alright, pick it back on the field who last time ran a successful offensive drive. Look like a little RPO action, something that the last offensive coordinator. And then Matt Canada had no clue that were, that were even a thing. All right. 2.33 on the clock. Looking like a stack formation. And, oh, the short and elite to Deontay. Wide open. Stepped out of bounds at about the 36. First down. Do you see the absolute insane separation the out route was able to ha be had? And you know what? Playmakers get open. Looks like 209, last play before the two minute warning. Uh, looks to be in man coverage again. Can oh, under pressure. Looks like the offensive line let home a, a rusher before the out route could be thrown. You know, out routes are, are very hard, very hard throws. The hardest in the NFL to really get to. All right. Back into man coverage. Oh, no. Oh, no. Pickens, the rookie receiver, could not create separation. Even though it was expected. No separation. So, Pittsburgh out in five wide. They're going to really want to look to Deontay for a certain separation here. And we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening. Oh, unable to thread the needle. Two post patterns directly at each other. Expecting man coverage. It looked like Pickett was going for. But it did not go very well for us indeed. Alright, this punter. Presley Harvin. Thick as a milkshake that you can turn over and not exit the glass. He's going to go ahead and punt it. Not the greatest kick of his career. But he is a very inconsistent punter. If you guys have ever watched Sundays. Fair catch caught. 27-147, an uninspiring second drive of the game for both teams. It looks like the Steelers are going to come out aggressive right away. Edmonds kind of snaking on down to the line of scrimmage. 
There was enough time in the pocket there. When you're setting quite the blitz like that, they had the blockers. It does look like the Steelers are lining up once again in man coverage. Joseph assigned to the running back. Was able to peel off in time. Not covered much of anything over the middle of the field. But the blitz gets home. Winston having trouble making decisions under pressure. I wonder if the Steelers are going to go back to it on third down. Let's go ahead and take a look. TJ Watt just might just go off right here. See if he can get some good pressure off the edge. 101. Looks like it was a run on third and forever. Timeout, Pittsburgh. They want the ball back. They want one more shot at getting points. At least a field goal before half would be very, very spectacular for the team. All right. So we got uh, Gillikin here back for the Saints. Kicking it deep to Godwin. The old man. Wiggles. Goes right. Jukes. Oh, takes a hit and goes down about the 40-yard line. So, they need about 25 more yards. 25 yards, and we have nothing but glory. All right. Deontay on the slot fade. We're watching that one. I think we just go like that. Pass lead up and out. Oh! <laughs> what an absolute phenomenal dot by the Rook. Deontay's dancing on the sideline. He's been targeted quite a lot today. It looks like he is making the faith be rewarded for going to him. It was a cover two, it looked like, from our uh, past view. All right. Man coverage. Timing route. Oh, Pickens unable to create separation, even on a stop route. Stop routes against man coverage should get more open than a 24-hour diner. All right. Looks like the Steelers want to go to the corners. They're not really there against a cover four type scheme. So Godwin underneath the new acquisition into the game. Under center, 35 seconds. You do have two timeouts if you have faith in Najee to get it. Do you have faith though? It does not look like it. They are going to the pass. Uh, wait from the clear. Nice little rollout. Deontay breaking a tackle down to the 11. Timeout Pittsburgh. 24 seconds. We're in a goal line situation. The red zone, the hardest place to score. Again, unless you have a good running game, which at this time, with this much clock left, not really. Oh, oh, not set. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely ruined. As a wide open Deontay was crossing the middle of the field, basically giving him six. Pickett took a hit, shed the hit, and then took another devastating blow as he was recovering. Drops the ball on the field. Rook, you got to have bigger hands than that. So with a few precious seconds left on the clock, I would imagine we are going to get just a, a slight run or something to run it down and finish it off. As Kamara is always dangerous on the edge. Thank goodness he did not break that tackle. As there weren't a whole lot of defenders left before him, green grass, high tides in the end zone. We're calling his name. All right, gun tight, offset tight end. Steelers look to come out in a little bit of a, a conservative defense again, a cover four system. Just T.J. Watt though, he does he is not conservative. It don't matter, it don't matter. T.J. Watt's getting off. Yeah, he has to get the ball out immediately to the flats because he is under pressure, like coal underground turning into diamonds. Looks like Winston is finally finding his 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 footsteps in the pocket here. T.J. Watt still doing well. We got a trips formation to the left. Uh, defend deep. Corner routes. And T.J. Watt gets the strip sack right back to Highsmith. Four seconds left. 50-yard kick is ahead of us. What an absolute play by the playmaker. Saints, a major functional error right there. Not double teaming the reigning defensive player of the year in argument for the defensive Number one stud. All right. It looks like uh, somebody like Boswell, one of the top tier kickers in the league, should have plenty of leg for this. He gets it up, and he gets it through. Easily taking the three-point lead into halftime. That's got to be very motivating for Coach Lou Fink. In his first day back. Or in his first game. All right, we're on. We're on to halftime. 
the report right here. Oh, they're doing like a wrap-up around the league. We got uh, Watson, for some reason, came off suspension early. Denver at Tennessee. Russell Wilson's actually putting up a stat line. Jerry Judy, not traded at the deadline. Five receptions, 76 yards. Henry not really getting going either there. Nashville, it's going uh, all the riding ways. Uh, Bills at Vikings. Bills up by four just before halftime. Jer uh, Jared. Josh Allen, nine for nine. That's not too shabby. All right. Looks like the Saints are targeting a lot of short throws, and they're completing 80% of them. So that's not great. All right. Inside rush attack frequency, we're almost 40%. Inside rush. We got to keep that up. I think we want to keep running inside. I think that's what we want to do. And we need to defend that too. With that. Especially without Cameron Hayward. We need big bonuses to our uh, interior run defense. All right. As the second half commences. All right. Deep in his own end zone. We're just going to get out of the way and let that bounce on through for the touchback. Taking over our own 25. Kenny Pickett. Two scoring drives. But one wasn't really, re wasn't really a drive. It was more of a TJ turnover into points. TJ is second leading scorer on our team almost. Boom! Ooh. First play out the gate. Najee is bringing the power. The speed. The velocity. Steelers are going to want to motion over another body. The Steelers see that it's man coverage. Looks like Kenny... Trying to flip the run is unsuccessful. He's going to send back the man the other way to get him out of there, to get fewer bodies. Oh, the takeoff. Oh, oh, the absolute foot in the ground, plant and go. That's the Najee we need to know. The one that just finds one cut and goes up the middle. The Saints kind of giving away a little bit of the middle of the field. Nobody in the A-gap except linebackers. The double team's there. Najee stuffed short, though. Najee unable to get in that bulldozer truck that he paid so much for during the week. That Fink beat into him. Fink unable to make the proper decision to go for it. Decides to punt. He doesn't want to do it that deep in his own territory. But that's okay. A stifling defense. Ever since that first drive. They've had everything answered. Jameis with a split back formation. It looks like an angle route. And it is down another strip sack for TJ Watt. That seems unusually high. With Leal coming up with the ball. The Rook coming up with the sack of the Queen. Or the Bishop. I don't know. What's the saint? Oh, Steelers getting the ball back just that quickly. Just makes the game so much easier. You see how much different this Steelers squad is with and without TJ Watt? Him alone provides so much value to the defense that had been lacking for much of the years. The interior pass rush is great out of Hayward, but without the exterior closing down, winning one-on-ones, you're seeing a lot of vulnerabilities here. Go on. And, and Najee starting to get rolling. 15 rushes, 53 yards, and a TD. Keep on keeping on. I don't see the Steelers getting away from that interior interior run game. Ooh, solid, solid hole being filled there. Looks like the Steelers are going to go to a shotgun here at second and eight. A shotgun form. Let's see what that means for him. Looks like they're just going to a screen. Can they get a block? One more man to beat. Oh, runs him over. Never mind, a couple more guys. To the one. To the one. Oh, great call, Fink. Great call. 26 duo. Boom! Oh. Najee is absolutely turned on another gear. It looks like he's fully healed field from the Liz Frank injury that plagued him for the first part of the year. He's absolutely shoving dudes into the dirt. He just, I mean, he's air trucking. He's so confident and cocky. What an absolute glorious... Glorious run. Now that is Pittsburgh football at its finest. Up 10 points in the third quarter. Jameis Winston needs to turn it around. What happened to that first drive magic? These Steelers who everybody thought 
was selling this whole year, just going tanking for a high draft pick, looks to have turned around back home. You know, the ultimate motivator, Mike Tomlin, is gone. They've gone to a hardcore coach. A man that don't take no guff. Single back Trey. The Steelers in a nickel look. Devin Bush, mean mugging the gaps. Winston with the curl route. Delivers it a little late and dangerous. But it is enough for the first down. Okay. Okay. Looks like a nickel package here for the Steelers once again with a trips right look. Oh, an obvious. And, oh, no. Kamara. Just diving off everything. Make a last man standing. Okay. All right. Down to the 17 yard line. That was not great tackling defense. I mean, getting that guy in space is going to be problems. We had one broken tackle. Was that Bush? We had a missed tackle. And then a second broken tackle here a little bit later. Diving too far away. Unleveraged. Luckily, we did have Minka there to save. So now we got to have a nice, solid goal line stand. Does not look like our defense. Again, it's holding up very well against the interior run. 0-1 trap. Finally shut down for only a couple yards. A solid move, Larry. Solid move. All right. Steelers. All within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Kamara. Still up the middle for three. Against a heavy man blitz. All right. Steelers once again. Showing him what they got. Joseph one-on-one -on -one against the tight end. Mean Oh, no. Oh, no. Edmonds. Ah, oh, stop with the one. It's first and goal on the one. A goal line stand is necessary. Stand up, Steel Town. Everybody on your feet. It is the start of the fourth. The coach is calling a 3-4 defense on the goal line against a trip set. Devin Bush going to roll in the middle. See if we can shoot this inside gap. It was going to be an inside zone. It's an inside zone. Devin Bush is unable to shoot. And again, scoring a touchdown for the Saints. Right up the middle of the field. Unable to stop that interior run. We thought we had a gap shoot, but the, the guard came off at the last second in order to get it through. Ooh. Devastating touchdown drive. Let's see if let's see if the uh, the Steelers can respond. Gonna need some points here. All right, 17-14. It's a good one. Just what you want in football. Ain't this living. 5:59 till the clocks hit eternity. And this one's in the books for good. Five minutes for the rest of our lives. Oh, unable to find a crease, but Godwin feels there's something there. Kenny Pickett strolling out of the field with his two gloves of destiny. I'm sure one day we'll be in the Hall of Fame, much like Michael Jackson's gloves, Mike Tyson's gloves, and OJ's. All right, it does sort of look like man coverage. It is not off the rip. Kenny Pickett's going to check down to the flat route. We'll take a five-yard gain every time. Surprisingly, they went to a pass first down, but we are not Matt Canada. It is not run, 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 or run, run, then pass and go three and out. We are an offense that changes things up. A little draw action. Oh, mis-executed. Was that Mason Cole, the center, completely biffing his block? All right. Trips left. It does kind of look like a little bit more of a zone coverage. We'll see if the Steelers can hit Najee in the flat. Quick. Gets out there and is unable to break any tackles to the first. Absolutely devastating. He threw a stiff arm off. Uh, I'm starting to feel like the stiff arm chemistry was better and should be the one that we go to over Tank. All right. Punting back to Nolens. My big old thick Harvin. Let's try and get down there before they do anything crazy. Uh-oh. Harvin's not fast enough. 
There we go. Deontay. No. Wrong Johnson. That wasn't Deontay. All right. Uh-oh. New Orleans almost in tying it up range with four minutes left on the clock. Can we make it happen? Uh, enough sheds happen. Enough sheds got home. No gain on that one. Points allowed. Season ranked 31st. We are not doing so well. A weak close flex. Steelers and matching personnel with New Orleans. Uh oh. The corner out. Butt naked. New acquisition. William Jackson giving it up. 342 on the 21. Are you nervous, Steel Town? Are you concerned? We're going to play a little aggressive here. Bringing everybody up. It's a screen. The screen's not there, though. And we got a Levi Wallace pick. One interception on the day. Three tackles. And he's celebrating. Let's get some other dancers out there. That was absolutely insanity. The screen played extremely well. By a defensive tackle. I, could, I, I don't remember which one 65 was. Extremely well. It delayed the screen long enough for Leo Wallace to get upwards and there. So, with 314 left in the clock, the Steelers are looking mighty fine. They are in the driver's seat. It's not what I wanted. Tempo. Chewing clock here. Need a first down to ice the game. Oh. Najee, once again, just messing around. Not doing nothing. He should have he lowered his shoulders. All right, going down to the very last second here on the play clock. Kenny Pickett here snapping it. And in the hole, boom! Najee heard that lashing about not going down. About not trucking the heck out of people. Surprisingly, enough holes have been opened up today against New Orleans. For Pittsburgh and their offensive line. Same route. Fall forward. We're in a solid six yard gain there. The New Orleans Saints knows we're going to run. And we're just running the ball. Down their throat. That's how you can tell it's it's a dominating football team. If you can do something when they don't want you to do it. You're going to have a good time. Third and one. Convert this fourth down and win the game. Or third down win the game all right we're gonna give it to our newly rejuvenated Najee it's kind of a spread look oh one on one in the hole and it worked they got it they can kneel out the clock now let it run the third win of the season over the Saints for the Steelers what a glorious one what a glorious one. Why is the coach calling an ISO? I don't know. I hope there's no fumble here. That would be bad. No fumble. Even though it took a pretty big hit stick. All right. That was showing the new aggressive attitude in Pittsburgh right there. We're out here. Stealing hearts and twisting dicks. All right. And that's game. That's that's an old school Pittsburgh Steeler type of effort. 17-14. A lot of solid downhill running. Taking advantage of the awful defense. Good job, offensive line. Solid start to our career with a win. Even though I've been have I've I've had instructions from the Dolphins ownership to lose as many games as possible to get a higher pick. Still feels good to win one in your first one here. Kenny Pickett making out with people. There it is, as, as football players can. That's why, that's why I play football, you know. We can't hug dudes too close. We need pad between each other to hug. Same with same with face masks. Well done, team. Well done. Let's take a look at the stats. Pick it 10 for 15. 66% completion percentage. Najee only averaged 3.4 yards a carry. 25 total carries. 
Shouldn't rush him that much. That's going to wear him down. I really should have brought in some backups right there. Receiving, Deontay had five catches for 74 yards. As you got when Frymouth. Biggins only got that one at the start of the game. We might need to make this tougher. That one I feel like was too easy. I mean, TJ Watt causing two fumbles was crazy. Two forced fumbles on two sacks. Does he just always do that? Is that just a TJ Watt thing? Feels great, man. And that is it for this week. We did not get our bonus for yards. Najee did get upgraded. Let's give him a power back. Can't wait. Boom. Trucking. Give it to me. Oh, okay. One carrying. We are going to switch tank, though. I didn't see any hit sticks. Or the one hit stick I saw, I was already in an animation. To armbar. So we're going to try and... We're going to try and truck people. Going forward. Did I just freeze my game? I just got glitched. Alright, well... See you next episode.